So here is uh, x, and here is a, various copies of the x-axis. For the ground state, what is the lowest energy state? It's not uh, zero energy, because n begins with 1. So it's this. The lowest energy state is a sine, so the wave function looks like this. This corresponds to psi 1. Or n equals 1. The next one corresponds to n equal 2 and begins as a sine and it just goes uh, like this. Has you add half a wave each time. Remember, we quantize Ka with n pi. So each time that you increase n, you're adding pi to Ka. So the phase, you see, you have sine of Kx. So you have sine that goes from 0 up to Ka. And Ka is equal to n pi. So you go from 0 to pi, from 0 to 2 pi, then from 0 to 3 pi, so it will be 1 up, 1 down, up like that. And I could do one more. This one would be with 4 cycles, 2, 3, 4. So this is psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, and psi 4. Wave functions do more and more things. So uh, what can we learn from these wave functions? There are several things that we need to understand. So one important thing is that the wave function, this, these are all normalizable wave functions. The ground state, this is the ground state, has no nodes. A node in a wave function is called a point where the wave function vanishes. But it's not the end points or the points at infinity, if, if you could have a range that goes up to infinity. It's an interior point that vanishes. And the ground state has no nodes. So a node, node, a zero of the wave function, not at the end of the domain. End of the domain. Because if we included that, I would have to say that the ground state has two nodes already, because zero and zero. But the zero at the end of the domain should not be counted as a node. Nodes are the zeros inside. And look, this has no nodes, and it's a general fact of bound states of potentials. The next excited state has one node. It's here. The next has two nodes. And then the next is three nodes. So the number of nodes of the wave function increases in a potential. You have more and more wave functions for the higher and higher excited states, and the number of nodes increases one by one on each solution. That's actually a theorem that is valid for general potentials that have bound states. Um, bound states are states that are normalizable. So they decay at infinity. You see, a state that is not normalizable, like a plane wave, is not a bound state. It exists all over. And it's a general theorem that these things, these one-dimensional potentials, whenever you have bound states, the number of nodes increases with the energy of the eigenstate. We will see a lot of evidence for this as we move along the course. and. Uh, a little bit of a proof, uh, and not a very rigorous proof. 
The other thing I want to comment on this uh, thing that is extremely important is the issue of symmetry. This potential for simplicity to write everything nicely uh, was written from 0 to a. So all the wave functions are sine of n pi x over a. But in some ways, it perhaps would have been better to put the 0 here. And you say, why? What difference does it make? Well, if you have a 0 at the middle of the interval, the potential and the domain of the wave function are symmetric with respect to x going to minus x. So actually, when you look at the wave functions, thinking you can rethink this as an infinite box from a over 2 to minus a over 2, and the solutions, you just copy them. And you see now this line that I drew in the middle. The ground state is symmetric. The next state is anti-symmetric with respect to the midpoint. The next state is now symmetric. And the following one, anti-symmetric. So this is also a true fact. If you have bound states, <coughs> states of a symmetric potential, potential, and we'll prove this one probably um, on Wednesday. A symmetric potential is a potential for which v of minus x is v of x. Bound states of a symmetric potential are either odd or even. This is not a completely simple thing to prove. Uh, we will prove it. But you need, in fact, another result that it will be in homework. Not this week's homework, but next week's homework. In fact, homework uh, that is due this week is due on Friday. So the bound states of a symmetric potential, a potential that satisfies this, are either odd or even, and that's exactly what you see here. That's not a coincidence. It's a true fact. The number of nodes increase. And the other fact that is very important of bound states of one-dimensional potentials, supremely important fact, no degeneracies. If you have a bound state of a potential that is either localized like this or goes to infinity, there is there are no degenerate energy eigenstates. Each energy eigenstate here, there was no degeneracy. Now, that is violated by our particle in a circle. The particle in the circle did have degenerate energy eigenstates. But as you will see, when you have a particle in a circle, you cannot prove that theorem. This theorem is valid for particles in infinitely, uh, not on a circle, for x's that go from minus infinity to infinity, or x's with uh, vanishing conditions at some hard walls. In those cases, it's true. So look, you're seeing at this moment the beginning of very important general results, uh, very fundamental general results that allow you to understand the structure of the wave function in general. We're illustrating it here, but they are very much uh, true in uh, general potential. So what are they? For one-dimensional potential and bound states, no degeneracy, number of nodes increasing one by one. If the potential is symmetric, the wave functions are either even or odd. <laughs>